Hi, my name is Christian. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, today, I'm going to talk about how we use the co-processor framework, a fairly recent addition to HBase, to implement prospective search. So let's get started. Um, here is the out outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm open up with a little bit of motivation. What got us started down the path to Hadoop and HBase? Then I will drive in some architectural details of the social media monitoring platform um, we have built for a customer. From there, we will look at the prospective search solution implemented with the co-processor framework. And then I will round up with um, some lessons we have learned and challenges we, we faced during the project. And finally, I will leave you with a few links to more information uh, if you like to get started with those tools too. Um, briefly about me, I work as a software architect at Centric, where I'm working extensively with um, HBase, Hadoop, actually the whole Hadoop ecosystem, and Solar on big data and search problems. I'm also a co-founder and organizer of the Swiss Hadoop user group, and uh, you can reach me on the email address on the slide or follow me on Twitter if you like. Um, here a bit context about Centric. Centric is a spin-off from Memo News, the leading provider of social media monitoring and analytics from Switzerland. And our main focus is Hadoop, HBase, and Solar. And obviously, our objective is to transform data into valuable insights. So now, the motivation. Why Hadoop and HBase for a social media monitoring platform? Well, essentially, social media monitoring is a special case of wet mining, which is not a once-occurring, time-limited task. Instead, the observation of the social web is the interaction of an individual, repetitive, and successive levels of operations, which are firstly um, information gathering with some kind of crawler. In the next step, the raw data are further processed, enriched, and finally indexed. Then analysis on the content is applied using natural language processing algorithms, and finally, the new insights are presented in some way to the user. Alongs alongside with the process, process, which is very common for data mining, our customer had a long list of functional and non-functional requirements, as customers always do. Some of them included a reliable and scalable storage system, a reliable and scalable processing infrastructure, the capability to apply analytics on the content, and finally, real-time notifications on newly detected documents. Well, what does real-time mean in this context? Real-time means really low latency and online application. It has nothing to do with batch-oriented offline stuff. We also wanted the ability to reprocess the data in a timely manner so we could, um, could test new algorithms and other improvements and could take effect on the whole historical data. In addition, we wanted the uh, technology and architecture that would scale with the business of our customer. With the mentioned process, the requirements and the heterogeneous information of the web and with the content we store, it was obvious to us to look at the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, it was quickly clear that HBase supports our storage demands and MapReduce would be the good fit for the processing infrastructure. So fi finally, we came up with the following technology stack. We use, um, we use HBase to store all our content. HBase is a column-oriented, schema-less uh, data store on top of HDFS. So therefore, we get all the benefits from HDFS as a storage system for free. That is fault tolerance, scalability, and the MapReduce framework. To provide a flexible user interface, we use um, Apache Solar. 
As I said, to do analytics, we use the MapReduce framework from the Hadoop and Mahout as our machine learning toolkit. The, to keep different components of our solution in sync, we use the HBase Rolog library. Rolog provides a way to build message queue systems on top of HBase. The prospective search for the prospective search solution or for the real-time solution, we use prospective search. Prospective search is a way of keeping up to date of any subject of interest. This technology constantly monitors relevant information for matches to user queries and delivers results in time. So users are notified whenever something new appears on the subject of choice. For example, Google Alert or Elasticsearch, I think, also uses this kind of technology to provide this uh, solution. So that was the why. Now let's have a look at the how. Here we see a high-level overview of the system. Um, from the user point of view, the main elements are the so-called user search agents. Sorry. Um, the, the green, the dark green circles here. And an agent basically consists of a name and a query. The query is formulated in the Lucene query syntax. As newly loaded documents, uh, as, new, as newly loaded content, which we call articles, come in the system, they go through several processing steps with different outcomes. On every newly detected article matching the terms of the agent, the user will get notified via email. Besides that, agents are used to generate um, scheduled email reports. Additionally, the user is able to log into the front end uh, where we can navigate through the agents, look at some results, and may also put results to different uh, archives. On the front end, the user can also manage his account, his settings for real-time alerting, his settings for, for uh, mail reports, and of course, editing, editing his uh, agents. On this slide, we see a more tailored view of the architecture. On the, on the, on the, top, of the, on the top of the slide, we have a bunch of crawlers which are res responsible to scrape all different kinds of sources. The crawlers are coordinated via Zookeeper, and so every crawler knows exactly for which sources he's responsible. The downloaded articles are then stored in HBase. Because of the highly dynamic nature of the web, web pages being added, deleted, and modified all the time, it is necessary for the crawler to revisit pages already in the index in order to keep the index up to date. For that, we have implemented the so-called scheduling algorithm because freshness in our context is very, very important. As I said, we provide a user-level search. It requires us to maintain a frequently near real-time update alongside our HBase-backed content. Um, on each update in HBase, a message is, ri is written into the message queue, which I already uh, said is implemented with the HBase Rolog library. And it informs another component of the solution which, which updates the solar in that index. With that, we keep the content of the index in line with that on HBase. And to send real-time notifications, on the other hand, we utilize HBase coprocessors, which, which I will explain in a minute. The front end is written in Ruby, um, and uh, for providing access control, it is connected to a MySQL database that holds all the related um, user content. Through Stargate, the REST uh, service from HBase, we read and write to HBase, and finally, the Solar is queried over HTTP by sending GET requests and receiving the results in JSON. 
I'm afraid to say that this solution is not in production. It's only running on our infra test infrastructure. It's because it's a kind of explorative um, branch to get our weeds, uh, to get our feeds wet with co-processors and to prove up, and to make a proof of concept of our idea of making prospective search with co-processors. The version in production instead uses Rolog for the indexing update as well as for the real-time notification. So keep that in mind. So to understand how we implemented um, the real-time notification, let me just explain some fundamentals about the coprocessor framework. Coprocessors like HBase, HDFS, and MapReduce are inspired by Google technology, and coprocessors were added or were mentioned during a talk by Jeff Dean in the year 2009. The basic idea was quite understood, and the folks from Apache adapted the idea and added this feature in the HBase version, version 0 0.92. Basically, core processors offer a flexible extension model to move functionality closer to the data. Uh, it also provides a client library uh, to, that gives a high-level call interface. So clients can just make a call to a row or a range of row, rows stored within HBase, and the coprocessor code can then execute against that data. It's a really modular, loadable framework for plugging in your own functionality. What this means is that you can really leverage HBase as a platform for scaling and distributing your own application logic the same way as you scale and distribute your data storage. The first part of the coprocessor framework are called observers. You can think of these as a very similar to database triggers if you come from the relational database world. Uh, they provide, e provide event-based hooks, um, hooks to interact with all kinds of standard operations within HBase. In addition, you can override behavior of core HBase code or extend it with, uh, customize it with your own functionality. The framework already provides classes based on the coprocessor framework, which you can use to extend from when implementing your own func functionality. The first type of observers are region observers. They give you hooks to interacting with standard CRUD or DML type DML type operations from HBase client point of view. This means get, put, scan, and delete operations. The second type of observer is master observer. Similar to region observers, um, this provides event-based hooks for interacting with metadata type operations, cluster administrating operations, things like table creation, modifications, or other type of things the master server coordinates. The third type is the wider headlock observer. This gives you hooks to appending into the wider headlock, as well as to the execution of restorations of those wider headlock entries. Um, the priority of a core processor defines in what order the coprocessors are executed. System level instances are called before user level coprocessors are executed. So when a request comes into HBase from the client, uh, let me see here, it can have multiple observers loaded against a particular table. When the request comes into the region server and be handed off to the pre hook, associated with that request for the first loaded coprocessor. So they are basically chained with priorities and load order. That's a coprocessor one pre-get, after that the second coprocessor is called, and so on. Then each of the loaded coprocessor pre-hooks gets called, and then we continue on to the normal execution of the, of the, of the H base, which in this case is an H region get call. Finally, the post hook gets called on each loaded core processors, and then the result is returned to the client. Um, 
The second aspect of the co-process of framework are endpoints. This provides you with the ability to export your own custom RPC protocols to clients and give you a standard interface for making calls over those. It's comparable to stored procedures. Um, like region observers, they are loaded against the table region in HBase. What this means is that your own custom code can execute in process directly against the region data. So when you combine these with region observers, you get a very powerful tool, combination, sorry. A region observer can watch, for example, data as it comes in and changes, maintain some kind of state itself, and then you can expose your own custom semantics for interacting with that state, querying it through an endpoint protocol. As I mentioned before, clients making um, calls to a single row or a, a range of rows and the co-process of framework will transparently split those calls into separate RPCs per table region and combine the results at the end and return the, call the calling code. Um, here we have an example of an endpoint request actually from a client to the server side and dark green represents user level code that's executing Yellow is HBase code, and blue are table regions. So we have a sort of a contrived example of this row count protocol that's being exposed. So the client just calls the co-process HBase HTable co-process. Uh, sorry, the client just calls a normal method against the protocol, and the HTable co-processor exit splits that into multiple parallel RPCs and then returns the result either as an aggregated map of results or clients can also be notified via callback interface as individual RPC responses come back in the system. Um, there are a few different projects making use of co-processors -proces co currently. The authentication, authorization and auditing feature added in HBase security are heavily based on co-processors. Then in the current version, there is a set of standard aggregate operations. Have a look at the aggregator protocol for details. And finally, there is also a really interesting project to embed Lucene indexes directly in HBase region servers. Details about it can be found on the issue tracker. So with this knowledge, we can now move on and look at our case in detail. First of all, we want the coprocessor only be loaded for a special region. To achieve that, we load it with the table descriptor. So it's just tailored for one specific table where we store our articles. So the table also uh, is called article table. Then we hook into the post open event of the region server to initialize the prospective search component, which is marked in light gray here. During this phase, all agents which the user, which the users enabled with the uh, real-time alerting flag are then loaded from another table and then passed with the solar core infrastructure. That means when the Co-process or when the region opens, it also has to instantiate a solar core because we want to use that infrastructure as well. We don't want to query uh, to pass queries by hand, so we leave it to the co to the solar core code. In the meantime, the crawlers are, are constantly feeding the system with new with new articles marked in these green circles. And each time an article is written into HBase, the post put event gets called. In this hook, a corresponding Lucene document is created from the payload of the put and added to a fast in-memory index. Then all the previous loaded agents, or the past agents actually, are then hit against that index with that single document. And the prospective search component then returns the IDs 
of all registered agents matching that particular document. The component then instantly notifies the user about a newly detected document, basically. So that's the idea behind this coprocessor, which uses prospective search to do real-time notifications. It basically takes out of the byte array from the put, convert it to a Lucene document, put it into a fast in-memory index, then hit all agent queries against it, see which one it matches, and then just uh, inform as, uh, another component about the agents that match, and that's it. So it sounds very easily, but let's see how it works. Uh, we did also some testing to um, evaluate the performance overhead of the just explained solution. And so we had a, a standard virtualized test cluster. Some ways say, well, virtualized Hadoop cluster. But that was the only choice for us at that time, which had um, four slaves with the running, with each of the slaves running a region server and a data node, one age master, one name node, and a zookeeper quorum of three. The test data we created from two hours of our, our live index, which was about one gigabyte, gigabyte of data. We partitioned that data into uh, equal pieces and loaded it on each slave. By the way, the region split size was default, uh, which is one gigabyte. And the result, honestly, is quite disappointing. Um, as a matter of fact, the performance overhead of our solution is very huge. When we load 10 agents, that's here, our write throughput decreases by more than 50%. So from when we load zero agents, we get a write throughput for around 1,600 something, and when we, we add 10 agents to pass all the the documents will come in into the in H base. The the write throughput uh, decreases to around 600. So the re the reason for that massive drop of throughput is first of all our implementation is very naive. I mean we do not lose. We, we do not reuse a lot of resources. We, we create, on every put, we create a new in-memory index. We have to, serial, to create a Lucene document every time, hit it on the, put it on the index, hit all agents against it, and so on. So that all takes time. And last but not least, we have to inform another component about the matching documents. So that is very time-consuming. That's why our, our throughput goes down. And also the query complexity depends or makes depends on the performance depends on the query complexity. So if we have uh, complex queries, it takes longer to, to find all the matches. So let me round up with some challenges and lessons we have learned during the project. Um, first, the challenges. The road, honestly, with HBase um, has been bumpy so far. We certainly got running Hadoop down at scale, but we have challenges with HBase. First of all, we are quite new to HBase. We have been using it for about one and a half, half year or so. So our operation team and developers are both learning and we're learning through explorations and failures. We are also carry out, not surprisingly, most of our testing on a mini Hadoop cluster with local HBase. And lots of the problems that we see aren't at that scale. They occur when we roll out our production cluster, so there is a lot of trial and error going through that process. The third issue Getting our hardware tuned just right has been challenging. Um, lots of configuration issues and lots of tuning to get HBase um, 
the work with the performance characteristics that we need. We also had a lot of stability issues too, and I'm sure many of you had those, experienced those. Unstable region servers, unstable HBase master, running out of file handlers, region stuck in transactions, and all kind of fun. So monitoring the health of HBase has been very challenging for us. Often we don't know that something is wrong until we have significant problem with the cluster. So we're working hard at adding more monitoring on it. But certainly that it's not all so bad. We are quite committed to HBase, and we're learning fast. And in the last couple of week, weeks, it has been very smooth with running with HBase, which is fantastic. Um, some lessons we learned is, so be careful with, with expensive operations in coprocessors. Co As we have seen, the, the right throughput can, can drop very, very down, and you cannot do everything with coprocessors, as we thought. So, on that scale, nothing works as advertised means don't, don't, don't just do local tests with the Hadoop mini cluster, use some real data, productive data if possible, and, and do lots of benchmark tests that all works. Then operational tooling and monitoring is the single most thing you can do up front because you have to know how the health is of your cluster. If your region servers are up and running, if the compactions are running, if the, the, the region splits works well, how is the JVM doing, and so on. That's very, very important in my opinion. And also play with all the configurations that HBase and Hadoop has because, and, and benchmark it for tuning. We started with doing a lot of configuration out of some examples from the web or from books and really actually that didn't know what we are doing. So we, we rolled back and did it step by step, made some benchmarks to understand how it affects the performance of our cluster. Um, Okay, there are some links here to some additional information. The blog post on Apache Org website gives you a very good overview of coprocessors and, and how they work. Um, it also worth looking at the API documentation of HBase, especially the coprocessor part. I think it's very well documented. You can also find a, set, a simple example of our prospective search solution I just presented to you on GitHub. And finally, there is a link if someone is interested in, a, in HBase Rolog. All right, I, uh, that's it for the talk. Thank you, everybody. I'm happy to take any questions you have. Oh, are there questions? Okay. So I haven't used HBase for a while now, and before there were no coprocessors. I was just wondering about one thing. Yes. The coprocessors, um, is that something that you, uh, like, um, uh, add, add to the library path when you start up the region servers, or can you also change that code at runtime without doing cluster restarts? Right now, it's only possible to load it uh, static. I mean, in the HBase environment, you have to add it on the class path, and then it's loaded, or you can, on the other hand, load it with the table descriptor, then you can add it directly to the schema, but there is no possibility right now to load it on runtime. So you have to restart HBase if you want to load a coprocessor. Co uh, that right. answering your question? Uh, yes, that does. Because that, so, so it actually adds like a deployment um, a hassle that you have to do a rolling restart of your cluster. Yes, you, you, you have to do that. Okay. You have to, ch to change the configuration of HBase, and you have to do a restart. Thank you.
Other questions? Okay, then uh, let's thank the speaker again. Okay, thank you very much.